Video lesson 14.2, secant segment lengths. So today we're gonna to focus on um, how secant lines interact with uh, curves or specifically circles in, in this case. Uh, we focused on tangent lines on the last video and now we're gonna deal with a secant line. So first things first, let's just refresh our memory as to what a secant line is. Uh, and that is a line segment that intersects intersects a curve or circle at two points all right so again in uh, you know the grand scheme of, of math um, you know a lot of times we're dealing with um, uh, curves or functions or something like that. You can have a secant line. Uh, in geometry, we're focusing primarily in this scenario uh, with circles and how they're interacting. Again, um, you know, obviously a circle has the curvature part of it, so same kind of relationship occurs. All right, so there's two properties that um, come out of this. Um, one of them is what happens when you're just solely talking about two secant lines. So as you can see in this example, uh, I'm going to highlight them over here. I've got two secant lines. Here's one of them, and here's the other one, all right? And notice they intersect. So the blue line intersects the, the circle or the curve here in two spots there, and the green one intersects at two spots here. All right, so once you have two secant lines, when they come together outside of the circle, so you have an exterior point from which these two secant lines inter, um, uh, intersect. Once that happens, you get a relationship. Um, and it's a uh, relationship between the parts of the secant lines and this, the whole secant lines themselves. All right. Um, underneath here, you see the formula. This is the formula that is uh, that represents the, the relationship between the, the, the pieces. So uh, you can see here the blue part here, I'm sorry, um, part and the blue line, sorry, part B, right? This is this portion, right? That, if you take that and you multiply by the entire thing, aka A plus B, that would be equal to if you took uh, the part that is labeled D here and multiply that by the entire segment, which would be C plus D. Right, the product of those two things will be equal to each other. Now, you know, you're welcome to you know memorize it using the kind of the formula base. I kind of like to represent my own little formula. I think it's if I kind of represent the formula in words, to me it's a lot easier to remember and memorize. So I have my little version here. I have and I abbreviated it here. I have the external part times the whole part. So external part of the first one times the whole secant line. And then the second one is the exterior part of the second line times the whole secant line. All right, so let's do an example like that because again, once you start doing these, I think it becomes a little bit easier um, to understand like the relationships. It's kind of visualizing it sometimes is a little bit more difficult uh, in my personal opinion. So, all right, so we're gonna come here. So first things first, in example number one, I notice I've got uh, two secant lines. So here's my first one. I'll do that one in blue. Uh, and here's my second one, do that one in green. Again, it's touching in two spots, one here, one here uh, for the blue line and here and here for the green line. All right, so again, our formula is gonna be, I want the exterior part of, so let's start with the blue one. So the exterior part of the blue. So what part of the line segment is outside of the circle, right? So in that case, I'm dealing with this portion right here the x. So I'm going to have x. I'm going to multiply that by the whole function, the whole thing. So all of this. Now because this is x, I have to add these together. So this whole thing is going to be x plus 1. So I'm adding x plus 1 together and I'm going to multiply that by the part that was outside. In this case, that's x. Now the formula says that that will be equal to the product of the exterior part on the second line, so that's the two, times the whole secant line. And in this scenario, I can just add those numbers together. I get a nice one, that's just six. So 
now I have an equation that I can solve. All right, so if I just distribute this, I get x squared plus x equals 12. Notice I have an x squared and x, so I mathematically here I know I can't solve for a single one of these variables, so I'm gonna get everybody over. I'm gonna make this into a trinomial, and that's gonna give me something that I can factor, right? I want the numbers that are going to uh, multiply to negative 12 and uh, add or subtract to get me a, po a positive one here. So if I take that here, I can say x, x, I'm going to have a negative 4 and a positive 3. Again, negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 4 plus 3 uh, is, oops, sorry, actually, so I take that back. This should be my positive. This should be my negative. Um, because then when I do this, I'm gonna get a positive one, which I want. Uh, T this off, set them each equal to zero. Solve, I get x to be negative four and x to be three. Again, as always, especially in geometry, we wanna check our answers, right? Here, x being negative four, if I plug that in here, that means that this length is a negative value. I can't have a negative length for value, so we're gonna reject this possible x. x being 3 is possible, that's fine. So that means in this scenario, my value is x. All right. So this example here, the setup is what I'm really looking for. Uh, obviously, the algebra here you know, is a little bit more involved than uh, maybe on a normal scenario, but uh, it's a good one to be able to do. Uh, this is really kind of the extent or the, the level of it, the, these types of questions that you're going to get. Uh, not really much harder than this. Maybe the the, the trinomial is a little bit more difficult. It doesn't factor as nicely or something, but that's really the extent of the um, difficult level in these. Okay. But again, the setup, how you do this part, what or or the little formula piece is the key uh, to setting it up. The second version of these is when you have a secant line and a tangent line. So now I've got two different things still happening all within the same circle. All right, so I still get a, 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 a uh, equation out of this. Uh, again, written down here, I've got my secant line here, which I'll do in blue. All right, I've got the tangent line, which I'll do in green. And again, remember, notice, secant line touches twice, and the tangent line only touches once. No matter how far you extend that green line, it's only gonna touch that circle once. And so, uh, just like the other one here, we've got an exterior part, which is B. We're multiplying that by the entire thing, which is A plus B. Uh, and then the new part is that the there's only an exterior part. Notice that the exterior part and the whole thing. This is the whole tangent segment, right? From here to there. So that's portions here. So the external part and the whole thing are the same. So it's really just multiplying c times itself, aka c squared. All right, so it's very similar here. I got that little statement down here, right? Um, how is this similar to the formula of the two ck lines, right? The tangent section, section is both the exterior portion and the whole. So like I said, if I was writing this out, I'd have B times A plus B equals C times C, exterior times the whole, but they're the same thing, so we just square it. So again, I personally like uh, writing it out in words, so I have the exterior times the whole secant line and the tangent segment squared. So let's, again, do one of these examples. Uh, let's try and help ourselves out and visualize what's happening. So again, identify my lines. I've got the blue one is my secant line. The green one is my tangent line. Uh, they tell me that TH is five, TA is four, and MA is what we're looking for. So I'll call it X. All right, so again, once I identify that I have a secant line and a tangent line, all right, I'm going to utilize that formula. So exterior of the secant line 
exterior of the secant line times the entire secant line. So the whole secant line is 9. And that's going to equal the tangent segment. So in this case here, AM squared. Once I have this, I can simplify the process. So I get 9 times 4 is 36. X squared is just X squared. Here, uh, because I just simply an X squared, I can shortcut here and just say the square root of these two items. I get X to equal plus or minus 6. But as we already indicated, you can't have a negative um, thing here. So X is just going to equal 6. Not possible to get the, the negative portion. All right. Um, and again, because of the geometry aspect, and we know that you could just say that x is equal to six. But again, it's good to know it in the back of your mind that when you take the square root, you do get those two two answers. All right. So x is six. Uh, so I guess technically, because I just called that, we should really label our answer as m a equals six, because again, that's what they actually asked for. All right. So those are your two things. That's the two scenarios you can get with secant lines. And uh, again, practicing with them, identifying them, memorizing the, the formulas. Again, I personally uh, like it in um, the word form that I have here. So I've got this form uh, in, up here, and then I've got this version of it down here. Um, again, I just think it's easier to interpret, uh, at least for me, if I think of it in terms of the parts and the words, um, it kind of makes the, memorizing the formula a lot easier. So, all right, let's do one or two examples real quick together. And then I'll give you guys a chance to kind of try some on your own. All right. Uh, all right. So let's label our parts here. LC is nine. So they give me the whole piece here is nine. Uh, they tell me LA is six and LB is 18. All of this is 18. And they want to know what is LE. So again, identify my parts. I've got one secant line here. I've got another secant line here. So um, once I know it's two secant lines, I say exterior. So I'm going to do the blue one first. Exterior times the whole, which I don't have to add anything together because they gave me the whole, equals exterior of the second secant line. So the green one is x. The whole thing here, all of this is 18. So again, don't have to add anything because it gave it to me. And now it just simplify uh, and solve for x. So uh, what do we got here? We've got uh, 6 times 9 is 56. 18x. If I divide each side by 18, I get x to equal, what is that, 3. So le, so therefore le equals 3. I always want to go back sure and make sure I've answered the question. Uh, again, especially when you're plugging in like X's and stuff like that, you want to make sure that you, you're you answering what you piece you're asked for. Uh, sometimes it might ask for other parts or something like that, or maybe multiple things. So just be careful. Make sure you clearly identify what they want. All right, uh, example number two. So again, I look here. Um, from this part, I'm going to label uh, the stuff that they give me. So they give me that GN. So this portion here is 7. TA is 3 more than NA. And I don't know what NA is, so we're going to call NAX. And this is 3 more than that, so X plus 3. All right, so let's identify again. I see this first line here, AG is a secant line. I see that TA only intersects once, so that's a tangent line. So once I recognize that, again, I'm thinking this formula up here, X here times whole is equal to tangent segment squared. So the exterior portion of the, of the secant line is X, the whole secant line. So this one, I can't just call it seven. I gotta add all this together. So this is X plus seven. So x plus 7 equals the tangent line squared. So that's this portion, x plus 3 squared. Okay. 
once I have the setup, now it's just regular solve equations. So the setup is the important part. The rest of it is just the algebra that goes along with it. Um, like I said, this is really the extent of like the harder version that you're going to see is just when they end up with algebraic expressions that are a little bit more involved, um, but doesn't really stop you from doing anything. Uh, just just a little bit of algebra, extra algebra to do. All right, so if you distribute, let's see what we get. X squared plus 7X. If I FOIL this out, let's just write it out for right now. But if you feel good, comfortable doing that in your head, go for it. So I got x squared plus 7x is equal to, again, I'm going to FOIL. So x squared, I got outers and inners, that's 3x plus 3x. So I'm just going to shortcut that, that's 6x. And lasts, I get 9. All right, so again, I've got more involved uh, terms going on here. But again, I noticed um, I've got an x squared on both sides. So if I subtract the x squared from both sides, they do drop out which is really good, less work for me. So once I notice that, uh, now I can just get x to one side. If they didn't drop out, if they combined, um, then I would have to uh, make everything into a trinomial, get everything to one side, and, and set it equal to zero. But um, I, I lucked out here um, from there. So I'm going to, uh, here, I'll rewrite the next line, just so you can see. So they dropped out. So now when I subtract my 6x, from both sides, um, I get a little bit nicer of an answer, and that is x is equal to 9. So again, that's my x value. Go back, check to see what they're looking for. Uh, in this case, they are looking for what Na is. So Na is what we call x. So therefore, Na equals 9. All right, so again, the setup is the key. Uh, again, obviously this one, I purposely put something with a little bit more algebra in there just to show you how um, it can get a little bit more involved, but that's the extent, that's really the, um, the, the meat of the problem uh, is just you know solving it, that portion. The key here is being able to make this, um, this equation up here. If you can set this up, then the rest of it's just dealing with the algebra itself. All right. Uh, again, you may need a little bit more practice on it, uh, you know, having to factor or to um, FOIL like we did in this case, you know, or combine like terms, whatever. But uh, again, that's just the algebra side from a geometric standpoint. It's all about setting up the equation. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do, there's two more here. I'm going to let you guys try these. So I'll give you a chance to pause the video, uh, give these um, a shot, and then um, once, you, once you've completed them, come back and see uh, if your answers are correct. All right, so hopefully you have time to check, uh, try those questions. Uh, let's just take a quick check on them. Uh, so for three, uh, again, there's a little bit more involved um, algebraic expressions, uh, which involve a little bit more work. But the uh, again, the setup is the key here. So uh, label the parts. Uh, now notice with one thing. Um, yes, we are looking for AC. So you may have called ACX, and that's fine. Uh, but I still need the exterior part. So then I would have had to been dealing with like, you know, whatever this portion is plus this portion to get me the x. Um, and if you start using two variables, that becomes way, way more involved. So uh, to make your life easier, I just called the exterior part x, the interior part 27, uh, which is what they told me. And then I can just combine those by calling it x plus 27. So all that really means is at the end, you got an extra step. You can't just solve for x and that's your answer. You got to take an extra, you know, 30 seconds uh, just to plug that in to find what AC is, because that's what we're asked for. But again, not really an extreme, a large uh, amount of extra work, just something you need to be able to identify. So um, other than that, everything uh, worked out there. So check over the work here, see if you see what you got. Uh, hopefully everything is good. Again, a couple of notes. Uh, obviously this one was a little bit more involved to factor, uh, but 32 and uh, negative five were your factors that got you negative 160 and a and added to positive 27. Uh, when you did uh, factor them and split them and set them equal to zero, you did get one of them to be negative, which you rejected. 
which left x just to be 5. And like I just said, uh, I then take that answer uh, like we have here. Uh, I took it uh, and added it to the 27 to get me the entire length of whatever AC was. For the second one, uh, not nearly as involved mathematically, but uh, is a good one to show that you don't always get nice simple answers. Um, so again, the setup, exterior uh, times the whole, because I again, notice I have a secant line. So exterior times the whole thing. So nine plus six is 15. And exterior of the second secant line, which is eight times the whole thing, which I don't know. So I called it X and solved. And CN is what we're looking for anyway. So the X is exactly what we needed to find. Um, so again, you don't always get nice decimal answers. Um, if they tell you to round, great. If not, leave it in simplest uh, fractional form or uh, simplest radical form or whatever the case might be. Um, but if they tell you to round um, or round it off, then by all means, go for it. When it comes to a fractional answer, uh, remember if it's not a nice decimal, uh, like this one is 11.25. If not, then um, leave it in the simplest uh, fractional form. So like this one would have been, um, let's see, I could have taken that what, by two. So 45 fourths would have been uh, the fractional version of that. Um, so that's, again, leave it like that. But something like this, that's, you know, nice decimal, great, go for it, convert it over 11.25 would be fine. Um with no problems. But if you get something like a third and you got a repeating decimal, then obviously um, you don't want to round that off unless they tell you to. Like this this one did say you can round to nearest hundredth. So if it was something like that, then you'd be fine. All right. Um, so again, go take the chance to look over the video. Uh, if there's any parts that you don't understand or uh, need to go over more, uh, by all means, and then utilize this as a means to help you with uh, future practice problems.